Thank you. <laughs> so, we just came from Dax's uh, Korean school. So today I'm going to be making some little pancakes. One is going to be a skewered pancake. It's called Sanjok. And I'm going to do a couple variations. I'm also going to do some zucchini pancakes and maybe some seafood or fish uh, Korean style pancakes that are typically made for Chuseok, which is Korean Thanksgiving. So kind of loud up here but anyways I'm going to go into my local H Mart which is my local Korean grocery store and get some ingredients okay. welcome back everybody so I am back home. As you saw earlier, I had some early morning things to tend to. Dax had Korean school. I went to H Mart and I got everything I needed to show you today. Some of the uh, Chuseok or Korean Thanksgiving holiday um, foods that I'm going to make. Today I'm going to be making the skewered um, Korean pancake and basically it's skewered meat, veggies. Um, traditionally, I think it's things like rice cake spring onion or green onion, um, meat, spam, crab meat, um, carrot. I will put information below. Um, I'm going to do sanjok. I'm also going to do the little fresh zucchini dipped in an egg batter. Those are t a type of pancake. And I'm also going to be doing codfish. Uh, my, that's actually my husband's favorite. He loves the, the battered fried fish. And it's not deep fried. It's just kind of like a pancake. So we're going to do, <laughs> you hear my kid? <laughs> So I'm going to be doing three types of uh, different recipes today, but I'm going to start getting things prepared. I'm going to get stuff ready and I'm going to show you what we do today. Okay, so here I'm working with one pound of squash, or you could use zucchini, um, or you could even use Mexican squash. Actually, this looks like Mexican squash, but the package said Korean squash, but you know, use what you can get your hands on. So what I'm going to do, is start slicing them into maybe a quarter of an inch uh, sized rings. You don't want them super thin, but you don't want them super thick. So let's see here, something like this. You wanna be able to dip it and dredge it and fry it without it getting soggy and you want it to still have a nice texture to it. Okay, so here are all my little zucchini slices. So what I'm going to do next is place them on this large baking sheet, just like this. Okay, so it's been around five minutes and I do want to show you what I was talking about. As you can see, all that moisture that's collected on the top, I'm just going to pat these dry. You wanna get rid of that. And underneath there's a towel, so the one on the bottom is doing pretty good. So all you'll do is take the napkin and just do that. Okay, so for my dredge, I'm using all-purpose flour. Here I have a half cup of all-purpose flour. And I'm also going to add some dry spices here, or seasoning. Here I have some onion powder that I like to add to the dredge. And it's up to you the amount. I'm also going to add some garlic powder, granulated garlic powder. Now this is not a traditional 
thing. This is just a me thing that I'm doing here. And I'm just gonna give this a mix. And because I already salted my zucchini, I'm not going to add any more salt to this. That is enough, uh, in my opinion. But, you know, you could definitely add some more seasonings and spices to your dredge, I think. But again, traditionally, the dredge is typically just flour, uh, from at least from what my mother-in-law explained to me. All right, my dredge is ready, so now I'm going to work on the egg batter. And the egg batter is going to consist of, you guessed it, egg. <laughs> so I am going to be um, mixing up three large eggs is my guess. Uh, I think that'll be enough for a pound of zucchini slices. By the way, you probably shouldn't be breaking egg into the bowl. You're going to mix it in because of shells. But sometimes I like to live dangerously. <laughs> okay. Eggs are combined and beaten well. So I'm going to set up the dredging station and we are going to fry us some of these delicious zucchini little pancakes. Okay, so I am going to um, have my husband fry these, but I'm going to explain to you the process, and it's super easy. It's not that hard, but here's how we do it. Okay, so we are going to be working with this little, um, I guess a little griddle will work. You can use the pan or griddle. This is nonstick. I'm going to add some oil to the pan. And this is not deep fried, so, I mean, you could deep fry it maybe, I don't know, but this is more cooked like a pancake. So my pan is preheating, my oil is preheating. So now what we are going to do, or what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of my little, make sure this is pressed. I'm gonna take my zucchini here, and I'm going to dredge it with the dredge, that seasoned flour that I made. You want to shake off excess flour from this. Now what you're going to do is dip it right into your egg. And I'm helping, my husband's helping me now, so. And then right into your preheated pan. Okay, so here is the finished product. And this is just for garnish. It's not really even stuck on there, but we like to eat it fresh with the zucchini. And I used a sweet mini bell pepper. This is not spicy. You can definitely use the long red spicy peppers for this, but um, we're not big on extra, extra spicy stuff. So we opt to use the sweet bell pepper and it looks really nice especially if you're serving this like on a platter with other you know foods for chusok so i am going to try one of these here we go Mhm. Mm it's really good um, I can definitely taste the onion and garlic powder that I put in the dredge. It doesn't overpower anything, but it, it really does add a little bit, you know, a subtle flavor to it. The sweet bell pepper, in my opinion, really tastes nice. It's fresh. It has like that crunch. And the zucchini is fried to where it's cooked, but it still has texture. It's not mush. And that light fried egg batter, just, it's really, it's one of my favorite things. Um, and my husband also likes to eat this with a dipping sauce. 
I'll show you how to make that towards the end when everything is done. All right, so now I'm going to work on my fish. Okay, so moving on to the fish. Today I'm going to be using codfish, and this is just one chunk that I bought from the market. And as you can tell, this is sort of kind of falling apart. So I'm going to try to cut this as uniform as possible. So I'll do the best that I can. I'll show you what it looks like after I work with this. Okay, so here, is what I ended up doing. As you can see, they look pretty uniform. They're just square pieces. So now what I'm going to do is salt them. And you're thinking, why are you salting fish? I'll tell you why, because I want to salt it, you know, for taste. But adding salt will sort of help toughen it up so I can dredge it and coat it and cook it and handle it without it sort of flaking up and falling apart. You don't have to do that. If you are a fish purist, don't do that, <laughs> but I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna put it, flip the salted side down. I'm using clean hands, by the way. Okay, now I'm just going to salt the other side and we are gonna fry these up. I'll show you the same dredging process. Now I'm going to work on my sanchok. Basically this is a skewered meat pancake and there are variations that you could do. Today the ingredients that I'm going to use are rice cake. This is a Korean rice cake. I'm using Korean pickled radish, the yellow one. I'm also going to use imitation crab meat, some green onion or scallions, and I'm also going to use spam. Now, there are different variations of sanjok that are done. Uh, there's different meats and vegetables and combinations you can use, but this is the combination we typically like to do. So definitely find the combination that you like. Sometimes I've seen them done with beef and asparagus, mushroom, so it's all good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is basically cut these pretty much the same length so we can make semi-uniform <laughs> um, skewered pancakes. Okay, so I've oiled my knife. Now I'm going to continue cutting this right down the middle. And actually there are rice cakes that are a lot smaller, but these were freshly made at the store, so I like that they're soft. And if you're working with something frozen, You'll have to like cook it first and get it prepared to work with it, but just like that. Okay, so I basically cut enough for, for these are seven, but then I'm gonna cut them in half, so it'll be 14 of these that we'll be making. So these are pretty much all uniform, the same length. So because the spam is obviously short, I'm basically going to cut the rest of the long ingredients in half, and that's what we'll be skewering. Okay, so before I forget, I'm going to dredge these in a third cup of flour. This was a third cup and I have it on this small baking sheet. And this will help when you're skewering them, especially the sticky rice cake. So let's just drop that in there. Oops, making a mess. And you just want to dredge them, shake them around. And you want to make sure you shake off any excess. And then I'm going to place these on another baking sheet. Okay, so this is all dredged and ready to be skewered. I'm going to make another egg batter or just egg. So I'm going to take, I think two large eggs might work with this. Okay, so this is ready. I'm gonna take all this over to the table and everyone's gonna pitch in and we're gonna start skewering all this. Okay, so I'm gonna show everybody how to do the first one. I'll show you guys. So here I just have toothpick, 
just a, a little toothpick here. So I'm going to start with my rice cake. Basically you wanna put the colors sort of contrasting. So if I have rice cake here, let's see, I'll do spam. And then actually that I need to do a little higher, spam. Then I'll go in with, let's do radish. I'll do two to three of the scallions. And let's do like, some of these are longer than others, but that's okay. And then you're going to do the crab meat. And that is your skewered pancake. And then we're just going to continue doing these in a row and then the next step will be to dip them in the egg and fry them. So I'm going to make a quick dipping sauce that goes perfect with these different pancakes and it's very simple. Here I have four tablespoons of soy sauce, two teaspoons of rice vinegar, and some chopped green onion. And you'll just want to give that a mix and your dipping sauce is done. Okay, so here is my platter of different Korean style, just pancakes, I guess. This is the skewered pancakes that we dipped in egg batter. This is the zucchini, and here is the codfish. Now, the fish definitely is up to you. A thinner slice would work, but I actually like chunky pieces of codfish, but it's definitely up to you. And back there is the, a little bit of that dipping sauce. If you celebrate chuseok, I hope you guys enjoy your chuseok. If not, if you're just curious about this food, give the recipes a try. They're super easy to make. And if you have a Korean grocery store or possibly like an Asian grocery store, you'll definitely find these ingredients. So anyways, if you're celebrating chuseok, happy chuseok to you and your family. And I know there's a Korean saying. Yes, there's one. What is it? <laughs> 가족들과 즐거운 추석 보내세요. Okay, bye guys. <laughs> Until the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.